Hey, beady friends. Welcome. My name is Meredith Frotty, and I am from Beetle on and Artistic Wire. And today I am going to be teaching a class on behalf of Beetle on for at the Michaels community classroom. So while everybody is coming on in and we are all getting settled and situated, I want to say welcome again, let you know that this meeting is being recorded. This is not a make or make along class today. Unfortunately, um, I'm going to be going over a lot of information and a lot of um, different ways of achieving the same goal for our project today. Um, but this pro this program, this class, um, is being recorded, like I mentioned, and it will be available on the Michaels Community Classroom YouTube channel in 24 to 48 hours. It kind of depends on, on different factors, but it will be up soon for your viewing pleasure. There are also tons of old classes, both from me um, and from other instructors from Beetle On, but then also from other instructors and makers from all across the craft community. So I definitely, definitely recommend, after this class, of course, um, going and browsing around on the community classroom. I've actually taken a lot of the classes, both live and um, <clears throat> on the replay on the YouTube channel. And oh my gosh, just what a wonderful, wonderful um, trove of information that Michaels has given us. So welcome everybody who is here today. A couple more things just be, as we're getting started. Um, Yvette is here from Beetleon as well, and she is going to be in the chat room. She'll be posting the instructions as we go along. And there are actually a lot of, a lot of steps to the instructions today. Um, so she'll be doing that and she's also there to answer all of the questions. So as the questions are scrolling through, I am looking and hopefully I will um, I will be able to see um, the question, but if I miss something or something isn't quite clear, she's gonna go ahead and interrupt me. Um, so one way or, an or another, hopefully your question will be answered. So the title of this class, <clears throat> is repurposing old jewelry. Now that can me mean, of course, a gazillion different things. And before class, Felicia, who is our moderator from Michaels and I, were talking about um, the possibility and the probability of making this more of a series because there are so many different things, so many different ways that you can repurpose old jewelry. But what we are focusing on today is taking an old strand of pearls and restringing it or re-knotting it. I should say, more specifically. But if you don't have an old strand of pearls, that's great because I'm actually going to be using new materials to do this project. So it's a little bit of old, a little bit of new, but hopefully as we are learning, you are, we are going to, um, to think about all different possibilities for old jewelry. And the technique that we are going to be learning today is knotting pearls, but you can knot all different kinds of beads. <clears throat> and the material that we're going to use today is silk, but you can do knotting with all different kinds of materials. So I did mention that there are going to be lots of different options, lots of different possibilities, lots of different ways that we can take this. Um, I'm going to try to stay on track, but those of you who have taken classes from, um, from me before know that I, I can get derailed pretty easily, especially if I've got some good questions coming on in the comments. So I am going to try very hard to stay on point. So I think we are ready without further ado, Felicia, to take that overhead camera. And somehow I was able to set things up a little bit differently. So my camera, even though the, the picture looks just like before, my camera is a lot higher. So I'm not quite sure what happened these days, but um, it's good because I won't be hitting the camera as much as I sometimes do. Okay, so the instructions for this particular repurposement of jewelry is, uh, were posted on the page where you signed up for class. Um, Yvette also will, like I mentioned, go through and um, give all of the instructions as I'm going along. And <clears throat> I do believe that when you are um, when you received your registration, the instructions were there as well. And as a, as a, a reminder, also, a really good resource for all things pearl knotting is the Beetleon website. Um, we have a really robust section 
um, and some videos as well on all of the different things that you need to do for, um, for pearl knotting. And let's go through all of the materials that I'll be using today. And as we're getting along, I've, I do have a, a couple of pearls of wisdom to, um, to share as we are going along. Okay, so what am I using for today? Well, I have these potato pearls. Now, I, I mentioned that we are talking about restringing an old strand of pearls, but I'm using new materials. So we get to cover all of the bases, right? We're going to talk about what we would do if we used our grandmother's pearls or uh, pearls that we found in a, um, in a thrift store or in a, an antique shop or a yard sale, I'm just trying to find that there's a SKU number right there, just in case you want the exact pearls that I am using today. These fun potato pearls. Um, and then the most important thing that we are going to be using today is the Beetalon Knotter tool. So raise of, raise of hands, our uh, putting in of comments, who has the beetle on knotter tool? And not only who has the beetle on knotter tool, but let's let's be honest, we're among friends here. Who who's, is still in the packaging? <laughs> when I teach classes, there's it is often that people have these cool tools, but they are still in the packaging. So don't don't be shy, don't be embarrassed. I have plenty of tools in my workshop that are still in the pack packaging as well. But this is the tool that we are going to be learning to use today. Could you use a beading awl? Sure. Could you use any number of beading, um, beading, or I'm sorry, not beading, um, knotting tools or accessories or techniques that are out there? Sure. But today for this class, we are learning how to use the beetle on knotter tool. And once you use this tool, it it's one of let's say, how shall I say this? Tools are always meant to make the job of doing what you're trying to accomplish easier. This tool is, is, is super good at doing that, <clears throat> if that makes sense. It's, it's just, its purpose is making knots and knotting necklaces, and it makes your job of doing that a million times easier. Okay, so <clears throat> that's one of the tools that we are going to be using today. So for our materials, we are going to be using a size number six silk thread. Now silk thread comes in all different sizes. At Michael's, you can get it as small in this variety pack as a size number two, as large as a size number six, but out in the world, you can get it from a size zero up to a size 20. On these cords, certainly you can get it thicker than that, but um, what makes these cards very, very special is that they have a needle already attached to them. All right, so we're going to get to that in one second. I want to go through everything else first. <clears throat> um, another thing that we are going to need for class today, or for this project, if you're looking at it in the future, is beetle on bead stringing glue. This also goes by the name of hypo cement, um, GS hypo cement, um, and you just need a little, da a little dab, a little dabble do you on the glue, um, and I'm going to give you a good tip if this is your first bead stringing glue class with me um, that will hopefully change your gluing life when, once we get to that part. Now, if you are restringing pearls, you will likely be able to reuse the clasp that your strand has come on. Um, if you can't, today for class again, we're talking about old materials, but using new materials, um, the beetle on, findings variety pack is a great one to use. And that's what I'm using today. I'm using the lobster clasp and the tag from the clap, from the set, um, from the pack, that's the word I'm looking for. And a good tip that I have started doing um, is whenever I'm using a, a, either a lobster clasp or a spring clasp or anything that can stay attached to the second part, <clears throat> um, you, I, I've been putting them together just so that they don't get lost. It's like those little things that sometimes you don't even think about, um, but, but it's a good habit to get into. So the next thing I'm doing, I'm going to use is a bead reamer. Now this is the beetle on bead reamer and it is not available 
in Michaels, but they have at least two electric bead reamers as well as many different um, different other kinds of reamers. So the battery operated one is great. The electric ones are great. The um, these are two examples of what non um, I don't know electrically assisted <laughs> reamers look like. They're just going to take a lot longer to do the reaming, and I'm going to show you how to do that, and you'll see why um, the battery operated one is much much better. So to do the reaming, the most important part is to have a small bowl of water. And that's what this is here. It's just a little measuring cup bowl that I have filled with water. And then of course, we're gonna need some scissors. So those are all of the materials that we will need to do our knotting. And then of course, there's always the additional, you know, we might need a chain nose plier here. Or it's kind of the regular tools that you have available in your beading toolbox. Um, so I think we are ready to get into the nitty gritty of the class. So what you would do if you already had a strand of pearls that were knotted, you would need to cut them all apart, of course, and clean the insides, which is where the reamer comes in really handy. Now, let's back up a step and ask the question, why even knot between pearls? right? It's, it's something that we kind of take for granted. We go into a fancy jewelry store or, um, you know, into your, your um, jewelry box. I got my, my fancy pearls I got for my 30th birthday, um, but they're knotted. And why are they knotted? Well, when you have beads, and this is just a, a strand that I have that is not knotted, it's um, using seed beads in between each of the pearls. If this strand were to break, all of the beads would fall off, right? We've all had that happen. We've all had a piece of jewelry break on us, whether it's um, strung on wire, strung on elastic, um, strung on silk, strung on anything. If it snags, if it gets wet when it shouldn't, whatever the reason someone pulls it, it's gonna break and your beads are going to go, of course, everywhere. But when you have a piece of jewelry that's knotted, because each of, the, each of the beads have a knot in between them, if by chance it breaks, your beads aren't going to go anywhere. At most, one might go flying off into the, into the distance, um, but because they're all knotted together, they're going to stay together. The other reason why we knot in between our pearls is to, to um, minimize the rubbing of the nacre against itself. So here's just a, a sample piece that I have. But when you have those knots, you can see the beads or the pearls in this case, stand apart from each other. So they're not going to be rubbing against each other so that that nice nacre or the coat, whatever the coating is, won't rub off. Another reason to knot in between pearls is to, um, to let all of the pearl show. So these, for example, again, you, you can tell, I, I don't use round pearls very often when I'm doing designing. I find a shaped pearl um, much more interesting visually. Um, you can see that you can see a lot more of that pearl or of that bead. So for example, if you did this in between labradorite beads or agate beads or re any gemstone beads, bead that has inclusions in it, you're going to see a lot more of that bead. And then, and similarly, I just think it looks really nice to have the, um, the pearls or the beads knotted in between. And also, this is, this is also one of my favorite parts. Look at how drapey and how smooth and how, um, and how um, drapey really um, that is. So a couple of reasons for why we not. So the very first step that we need to do when we are using, when we are, are stringing up pearls, when we're, whether it's a new strand of pearls or a strand of pearls that we need to restring because that will happen. We will, you will need to restring your pearls um, because silk is a natural material and you want it on silk for all of the benefits of silk, 
But if your pearls are 80 years old, they're going to need to be restrung on better silk. It gets dirty, it gets weak, um, it could fray, and it's better to restring them than to um, than to not wear them and, and give them the, the love and the, the attention that they need. So one of the important things to think about when you are stringing pearls or when you are restringing pearls is the whole size. So I've been doing this for um, long enough now that one of my ridiculous skills that will get me nowhere in life except for teaching this class is being able to look at the whole of a bead and know what size silk I should use to string it. I, you know, it's a party trick. I don't know. It's good for making jewelry. So I know that given this, the general size of these holes, I'm going to be very comfortable with a size six silk. But if you're just starting out, you, you don't know that, right? You're, you don't know what size, um, what size silk is going to be perfect for the beads. And I am actually, I think I'm going to string today with the black because um, if you've taken my classes before and if you have, welcome back. You know that I like to string um, and teach with a contrasting color of um, pearls, or I'm sorry, of stringing material. So again, I warned you at the get-go, there's a lot of information in this class. So you'll be able to go back and rewatch over and over again um, on the Beetle or on the Michaels Community Classroom on their YouTube channel in a day or so. So just stay with me because there's a lot of information, but it's all information that is necessary. So this is a card of silk. This is a size six card of silk. The great thing about these cards of silk is that they come with a needle already attached to them. So you don't have to worry about needling your thread. The silk or the silk is already attached to the needle. Now, when you pull this silk off of the cord, it's going to be very kinky <laughs> because it's been um, it's been around a card for all of um, all of its life. So what you need to do is stretch it out, and you're actually not stretching it. What you're doing is compressing this twist. Okay, you can see that there's this twist in the silk because it's two actually two strands of silk that are um, that are twisted together and you're just, you're compressing it. And then what that is going to do is also take out all of those bends. So for the sake of class today, I'm going to, here's one hand, here's the other hand, pull, 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 and pull all the way down for, to, um, to get all of those kinks out. But if we were not in class today, what I would do is I would double this over a door handle and lean back. That I have found is the best way to, um, to stretch out, and I will say stretch out just because it's easier, stretch out your silk. So we are going to test out our pearls to double check and make sure that they fit over this size six silk. So the way that I do that is I come to the end and I feel like the knot has just been tied for me, but I don't want the knot there. So I'm going to, well, we're just gonna leave it. Okay, so I've tied a knot right there and I'm going to slide on a pearl from, from my strand or from the strand that I have just cut apart. And I'm going to bring it down to that knot. Now, I already know that it is small enough because it, the bead or the pearl um, slid on with no problem. And I know that it's big enough because my bead is not going through that knot. So that's just my little, my little test to, um, to see if the, if the silk is the right size. Um, and just uh, a little bit more about the silk, size zero will be your absolute smallest size. And then size 20 will be your biggest size. That's some, some big honking silk. But you can use this, this technique and use this tool with leather, with satin cord, with, um, gosh, so many different things. 
but today we're using silk. Okay, so we were talking about reaming. Now, why do we need to ream? Well, if you've read ahead in the instructions, you see that the first three beads and the last three beads, our silk is actually going to go through twice. Okay, so just, just stay with me and believe in me that, um, that we need to ream out those beads. And then once we get started with our knotting, you'll see why. So a couple of things about the reaming. Now, again, I'm using the Beadalon battery operated bead reamer. There are two electric bead reamers that Michaels offers on their website that are um, that will do this job also. Now, learn from my mistakes. <laughs> and when you ream out your beads, you always want to do it underwater. Okay, don't cheat like I tried to do for many, many years. It will, it will make, it will hurt your fingers. It will ruin your tool and it won't work as well with your bead. So I'm going to show you the right way to do it. And then I'll show you the wrong way to do it. And you can see why it's just, it's better to do it the right way. Okay, so I'm gonna submerge. See, I'm gonna move. Can we get this down a little closer? There we go. All right, now, now we have the, the bumping opportunity, but we're gonna to try to do this because I think it's important to be able to see. So I'm submerging this in between my thumb and my forefinger. And then there's a little button right here. And I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna move the reamer. I'm moving it up and down and I'm moving it around. And what this is doing is it's enlarging, enlarging, <laughs> it's enlarging that bead hole. Okay, so now I did that one side and I'm gonna turn it around and do it again. And sometimes you have to kind of finagle around and play around with the, um, where you start the reaming process. And you can see, I'm not sure if you can see as well as I can, um, but how that, First of all, how the hole is enlarging. <laughs> um, and you're just gonna keep going back and forth and back and forth until your hole is large enough. So how do you know if your hole is large enough? Well, two ways. First of all, and I'm gonna put this aside because it does, it takes a little bit of, of patience and time to, um, to get that hole drilled. So the first way that I know that my hole is big enough is if the reamer comes out that other end about, I don't know, what would you say that is a quarter of an inch, a centimeter, about that much, right? So how helpful is that? It's a little bit helpful. And the bead reamer is great because you can enlarge a bead, um, all, most any beads. I don't wanna say all beads, the softer the bead, the easier it will be to, in, to use the bead reamer. So in order to test <clears throat> whether or not my beads are reamed, the holes are reamed enough, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can get my needle back through <clears throat> twice. So I'm just using a scrap piece of silk um, with the needle. And in fact, I can get my, my thread back through twice because that's what needs to happen um, in order to know that those beads are the right, the right um, diameter drilled out. Um, the bead reamer is very time consuming, but it is definitely very much worth it. And I've actually used this on Swarovski crystals as well. Um, so you can do it, you just have to be careful because what's happening is you're creating heat, you're creating friction, you're creating vibration. So always, always, always do it in the in water. If you have a manual reamer, um, all you're going to need is a lot of patience because it's going to take a lot longer, of course. Um, but all you would do is that very same technique, putting the reamer in and just moving it back and forth and back and forth and up and down and up and down until your bead is as, the bead hole is as big as you 
need it to be. But you can see how um, how much slower <laughs> that process is for getting that hole to embiggen. Um, okay, there was one more thing that I wanted to mention about the reaming and the holes of the beads. So if you are restringing pearls that have, um, that had already been strung, <laughs> um, you want to also use either the battery operated bead reamer or the regular bead reamer just to clean out the insides because time, um, time makes things dirty, right? Time makes our houses dirty. Time makes our life dirty. I don't know, <laughs> but you want to, you also want to make sure that you can, um, that you clean out the insides of those beads. So I have, let's see, two, four, six. I, I did a couple extras just in case um, I needed a couple extras, but you always want to make sure that you keep those beads separate from all the other beads that you're using. There are so many times um, that you need, um, oh, I'm sorry, there's so many times that I have mixed them up and that's no fun. Nobody likes when that happens. And you only need to ream the beads that you're going through twice. So it's actually only six. So let me just to, to make, to stave off any confusion. I'm just gonna keep six in my bowl. So three in the front and three in the back. Okay, I think, are we ready to start stringing up? Let's do it. So I have my, and again, I'm using number six silk. If your beads are different than mine, you might need to use a thinner or a thicker silk. And that tip that I showed in the very beginning with showing, um, with tying a knot and um, making sure that the bead will go on the silk but won't slip through the knot, will help you determine how, how thick the silk or what number of silk you need. And you could just see that just by putting the silk down and picking it back up again, it got a little tangled. So you just need to be aware of the, um, of the challenges and the, um, the needs of your stringing materials um, and, and know that it, you need to be careful because the silk could get tangled if you are not careful. All right, so let's see, I've got my tool and I do have my silk tangled on some things. So do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> let's untangle that over to my right. And now we are ready to start with the first three pearls. Okay, so in any beading project, if you've taken classes with me before, you know that I say that there's always a tricky part, right? There's always the hardest part of whatever project is. This is the hardest part. You might say at the end of class today, wow, Meredith, um, actually those were all hard parts. But I think that with, with practice and with patience, it's not, it's not too bad, this whole process. Okay, so I almost forgot that you need to make sure that there is a knot at the end of your beading thread. So I have that overhand knot there that I, I did on the first um, the first pass and I'm working on um, on the end of the thread, right? And you can see that as I am moving the thread back and forth, I'm doing it in between my fingers like this. Um, I always just kind of, um, I think I just did that as a, as a force of habit, but I think I do it for a reason. And that is it really helps to minimize the, um, the tangling of the thread. So now what I'm doing is I am putting those three or three of, I should say, of those drilled beads onto my silk. And I know that they are going to fit because, um, because I tested. So fingers crossed that it actually fits. <laughs> I didn't do the test, you all watched me do it. All right, so now we're going to come back and um, I put on those three, those three drilled beads. And now I'm going to string on one half of my clasp. And it looks like I'm stringing on my whole clasp just because I have it, um, I have it clasped together. Um, but I am doing that so I don't lose my lobster claw, especially when I'm teaching classes, I find that I lose materials all the time. So let's minimize that, shall we? Now, 
There are a couple of different uh, materials that you might see on an old strand of pearls. You might see no material here, but you also might see a material called French wire, or um, it's also called bouillon, or there are another of, uh, or there are all different names that it goes by. Um, but today we're just using um, the raw silk. And on my silk necklace, or my, um, my fancy pearls <laughs> that I got for a gift, um, they, it is just the silk that, is, um, that goes back through the bead. So that's, that's what we're doing today. I'm feeling a little, a little fancy. And I like using contrasting colors in my designing, but for today, I'm showing with the black thread really mostly so that you can see what I'm doing. The white on the white is, it would just um, fade into each other and it wouldn't really be that, that obvious what was happening. Okay, so again, I'm taking that needle, which has already been attached to my thread, which is so wonderful. Anytime I don't have to needle, my thread is a happy day for me. And I'm going just back through that first pearl. Okay, so everyone cross your fingers and hold your breath that I reamed my beads out enough so that I can get that silk back through all the way. And in fact, I did. So whew, I'm gonna breathe a sigh of relief. All right, so now I am going to, um, I'm going to tighten this up. And generally I like to build in wiggle room when I am doing any sort of beading. But what I have found is in silk, um, silk knotting like this, there generally is not a whole lot of wiggle room that is built in. And in fact, you don't want a lot of wiggle room because you don't want a lot of friction from this clasp on the silk. And I'm using a tag and a lobster claw instead of a jump ring or, a, or any other sort of ring because I don't want the silk to slip through my, the split in my jump ring. So now this is, this is actually the easy part. All you need to do here is tie an overhand knot. So let's see, we're going to come in here and all I'm going to do is thread the, um, Oops, thread the silk through so that it is tied in a knot. You could definitely, definitely use a closed ring. Um, there, gosh, there's so many different fun findings that you could use um, to, to knot with um, and to use as, a, as an ending. So somehow my knot got all twisted up. What happened here? And sometimes things get twisted on themselves. So I am just going to take a beat and I'm going to wonder exactly what happened. And I'm just gonna come in here with my pliers and see what happened. So one of the challenges that you'll find with um, with knotting silk is, did I split my thread? What in the world happened here? Um, bear with me for one moment. One of the challenges that you'll find with, um, with the knotting of pearls is that you can't really undo it once it's done. So, I'm not really not sure what is going on here. Oh, here we go. Okay, I'm not sure what happens, <laughs> but it ended up being okay. So that's a good takeaway message is that sometimes weird things happen and you're not 100% sure, but just go with it. And then usually you'll be able to figure it out. So all I did there is I, um, I did a, um, an overhand knot. Yep. And the black is challenging because it helps for you to be able to see, but sometimes it is hard for me to be able to see exactly what's going on. All right, so we got that, we got that problem solved. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back here through the second bead. So we went through the first bead and we tied a knot and now we're going to go through the second bead. And this is where I get nervous that I did the reaming the right way because if I didn't ream it enough, I've already done 
one and I will have to go back and do it all over again. And then that will be most unfortunate for all of us. But I think I did it well. Okay. <laughs> Good job. Woo. All right. Sigh of relief. Okay. So now I have gone through two beads and I am going to go ahead and tie this in an overhand knot again. And hopefully this one will work out a little bit better for me. I think it will. I've got good, I've got a good feeling about this one. Let's make sure I'm holding it so that we can all see. So just a simple overhand knot. Okay. So that is my two overhand knots, right? So not bad at all. So now we are going to go through this third one, but we are not going to knot. Not knot. <laughs> what we are going to do is we are going to go through this third bead and then we are going to tighten everything up, tighten everything up, tighten everything up, tighten everything up, and then we are going to stop, okay? And so here, what we're going to do is we're going to add that dab of glue that I talked about in the very beginning. So this is the um, beetle and bead stringing glue. You can also use GS Hypo Cement. Um, you might be more familiar with that. It's the same, same product, works the same way. Now, the most important thing to know about glue, and if you learn nothing else from this class, this is the, my, my most important tip for everybody. Everybody wants to take this glue out and to squeeze it, but you don't wanna squeeze it. You wanna hold it in your hand like this and allow the heat from your hand, the warmth from your hand to warm that glue so that it just comes a little bit out. And of course mine is um, old and has lost its top. So I'm gonna do just a little bit of a messy <laughs> glue, but you don't wanna squeeze that glue. You just wanna hold it in your hand so that it warms up because then you can put it back together, okay? So one last time, just hold it in your hand, let the warmth from your hand allow that glue to start flowing, and then it won't get gloppy and gross and, um, and gloppy everywhere. Okay, so now we can let this dry. I'm just giving a, li a little blow on it, but because we're in class, what we are going to do is now um, string up the rest of our beads. Now, sometimes our, our um, needle can get a little funky. So if that happens, you can do a couple of different things, at least a couple of different things. Um, you can either use your nylon jaw pliers to gently straighten it out. Or if that doesn't work, because this needle is so long, I've been known to just snip the ends off with my cutters um, and then continue going along. Um, but now all we need to do is string up our beads. And I am going to actually make a bracelet sized um, piece of jewelry today um, because you don't need to see me string up an entire 16 inch um, length of a necklace. Just know that the, um, the um, technique <laughs> is exactly the same um, for, for using the tool. Now, sometimes what you'll find is even on the same strand, your beads could have different size holes, right? So even though I double checked, this, this one isn't really going in very well, right? So all I need to do is to come back here with my bead reamer underwater and enlarge in that hole. And part of the reason why we, why it's such a good idea to learn how to re-knot pearls or re-knot beads is because silk is a natural material. 
So over time, it's going to um, it's going to degrade. I'm sure that we many of us have found in our um, in our old jewelry boxes or in our grandmother's jewelry boxes um, necklaces that were strong on silk, whether they be knotted or um, or not knotted, <laughs> um, and that silk is freed. So here is another one that I need to remount just a little bit. And I like making my pearl necklaces 16 inches long, um, but you can make yours 18 inches. You can do a choker of 15 inches. Different people are different sizes, right? So depending on where you want that necklace to fall on your neck or on your decolletage or um, on a specific neckline um, on a, a specific outfit, you can make your necklace any size you want. And again, I'm using the battery operated bead reamer um, because that is the one that Beadalon um, has and the one that I, I use all the time and is my favorite of all of the reamers. Um, but there are other reamers out there, both battery, um, I'm sorry, both electric um, and manual. I just find that I, um, I like the battery operated one the best. And you can see after going through some of these pearls, how um, janky the end of my needle is getting. And if it is too difficult to put through my beads, I'm just gonna snip it. But I can also use my, um, pliers to pull it through. So all different things that when you're, um, when you are doing um, beading that sometimes I don't even think about, you know, if I'm, if I'm working things up for a project or um, a demonstration, it's kind of, um, you know, second nature by now to do these things. Okay. So I've gone ahead and I've strung up all of my, um, all of my pearls for the most part. And I've moved them down to the other side and somehow a really big one snuck in there, but I'm not gonna worry about it. So let's see, where did my scissors go? Here they are. So now that this has dried, I'm just gonna snip off the, um, the short end. And you wanna make sure you snip off the short end and not the bigger end. <laughs> we've, we've all done, done it the wrong way. And now it's time to learn how to use the knotter tool. Right? So we all know that this is my knotter tool <laughs> for the things that are important to me. I have to put my name on them so that they don't walk away in the office. And the important thing about the knotter tool is that this motion with, with your thumb is how the knotter tool works. Okay. So the, um, the way that, the, the, that I do it with the knotter tool is I put all the pearls on first and then I do the knotting. And you'll see why and how much faster the process is and why the knotter tool is so great. So the first thing I need to do is do this first knot. And I am right-handed, but if you are left-handed, it works exactly the same way. And I have taught plenty of left-handed people. We just become a mirror to each other rather than a, um, a next to each other. So you just, um, if you're left-handed, it might, you know, it might take a little bit more practice, but the technique is just the same. So in order to do this, what I'm going to do, and I'm going to put the tool down at first, but you'll see when, once I get going and go up to speed that the tool actually stays in your hand the whole time, which is another reason why I love knotting with the knotter tool. So I'm going to take the pearls that I have already knotted that are in my right hand and wrap them around my left hand. And now this is, um, this is a, a kind of a two or three step process, but you're gonna not bring it around, drop it through that hole, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm creating the beginning of the knot. And the way that the tool works is you are going to pick up, my hand was like this, my hand is now like this. You're gonna pick up the thread coming from left to right and make an X with the thread. So you can see where the thread is and you can see where the all is 
of the beading of the um, knotter tool. Now I'm going to take my index finger of my right hand and I'm going to put it against the awl. I'm not going to put it on top of the awl. I'm not going to spear myself. I'm going to just rest it gently here on the side of the, um, on the side of the awl because this is very sharp and you wanna be very, very careful. And the important part here is you wanna now pull this, and I'm gonna do this step a whole bunch of times, but you wanna pull it straight up, okay? You don't wanna pull it down. You don't wanna pull it over. You don't wanna pull it, I don't know, to the side. You wanna pull it straight up because what that's doing is it's creating a tight knot against that all, okay? So now the next step is I'm gonna take that thread and I'm going to put it through the yoke, okay? The yoke is that little Y-shaped guy on the top of the tool. And just like pulling straight up was important for the first step, pulling down and to the left is important for this step. Now, I don't have a death grip here. I have a firm hold. <laughs> and as I am firmly holding, I'm pulling this down this way and I'm going to push up on the tool with my thumb. And what that's doing is the yoke is pushing the knot against the pearl. And when I release it, that knot is now tight against the pearl, okay? It really is magic. So now I move the next bead down into place. And like I said, somehow that great big pearl <laughs> jumped in there. So it's gonna be there for, for fun. And I'm gonna take one up to speed and show you how fast that goes, right? So next one, you always wanna make sure that you move your next one down into place. You're gonna wrap it around your fingers, drop it through the middle, Take the tool from left to right, pick it up, hold with your finger, pull straight up, and push it off. The reason why this knot looks big is because I didn't snip the, um, I didn't snip that extra thread close enough to the, um, to the bead because I didn't want to take it out of frame. <laughs> so that's why that one knot looks really big. So I'm going to do a couple up to speed so you can see the process and see I keep I have that tool in my hand the whole time. And we have done um, time tests in the office and I think it takes less than four minutes to knot up an entire 16 inch strand of um, strand of pearls if if what? If you've done all of the preparation beforehand. So you can see we did what? 40 minutes of prep for to get to this point where we zip through doing all of the knotting. All right. So I've done a bunch fast. Let me break it down again. Okay. So I'm going to move the next bead into place. You always want to make sure that you move the next bead into place. Wrap it around your fingers and drop all of those pearls through the center. And then pick up from left to right, making that X, holding your index finger right there at the top, pull it straight up to tighten it up, then take that thread through the Y and then push up with your thumb and pop it off. So you can see, right? We're like practically done. <laughs> I'm gonna speed it back up again. And then I want, and then I'll, I'll slow it down one more time before we get finished. But I wanna talk a little bit about expectations because whenever I teach pearl knotting, I always tell people it's going to take you four full necklaces before you get it right, okay? So your first necklace, and this is full 16 inch necklaces, your first necklace is probably going to be a little bit of a mess. <laughs> you'll have big spaces. You'll have skipped knots. You might even have double knots. It's not, it's not going to be pretty. So you're going to cut it all apart and you're going to start over again. You're going to give yourself grace. Your second necklace will be much, much better. You will probably make a couple mistakes. There'll probably be a couple of loose beads, a couple of little gaps here and there. 
but for the most part, you're going to, you're going to be okay. Your third necklace, you're, and then you're going to cut that one apart or you can keep it just to keep yourself humble. Your third necklace, you are going to make one mistake and it's going to be devastating because you're going to be like, no, Meredith, you said it was going to take me four necklaces, but this is my third necklace and I've got it done perfect. Um, but then you're going to realize that you made one mistake. <laughs> and then by the fourth necklace that you make, you're going to be patting yourself on the back because you have done it perfectly. All right. So I'm going to slow down um, for this last knot and I'm going to come to, sh to show everybody the process one more time. And I'm just going to come over and make sure that I am doing well and on track with my instructions. Perfect, I'm good, <laughs> just wanna make sure. Okay, so once again, around my, my hand and all, and all of those pearls go through the center. And the longer that this, um, that this end gets, the, you know, the more challenging it's going to be to come through the center, but you can do it. So picking up that thread from left to right, we're making that X, holding our, our um, index finger here at the top, not poking ourselves, Letting this go, lifting it straight up, putting it through the yoke, pulling down gently and pushing off, okay? And then the last one is we are also going to knot the last one. So once again, through and um, hold it here, pull it up and through. So now everything is knotted and I'm ready to come with those three beads that we reamed out in the very beginning. So I mentioned that there were two difficult parts to this process, to this project, right? The first one was how to set up those three, um, those three reamed beads in the beginning. That wasn't so bad, right? We, we made it through. So this is the second kind of tricky part which is the three reamed beads at the end. So now I am going to string on those three reamed beads. So one and two and three, and I'm going to move them all the way down to where the other ones are. And then I'm also going to add the second half of my clasp. And now just to make my life easier, I'm actually going to now take my clasp off because I'm gonna be doing some knotting and it's gonna be near, nearly impossible if I keep my clasp clasped, but I didn't lose it. <laughs> so we've got that going for us. All right, so let, I'm gonna bring this down again before I do the knotting. Oops, because the important part here is when when you are tightening everything up, you want to make sure that you are leaving enough room so that you can tie a knot here and tie a knot here. I hope with the shadows and everything, everybody can see. I'll try to come down just a little bit further. Everyone can see this. So when I tighten this up, I want to make sure that I have enough room for a knot here and a knot here. And I've always found that that is the trickiest part here. So what I'm going to be doing and what I'm going to be demonstrating is I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to come back through that first bead. I'm going to tie a knot here. I'm going to go back again through that second bead. I'm going to tie a knot here. And then I'm going to come back through that third bead. Okay, so we're doing the reverse of what we did for that very first step, right? Where we added the beads in the beginning with the knots. Okay, so let's see how we can do this so that you can see and that I can see. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back through 
that first bead. And this is where you can see having those beads be the right, um, be the right size with their holes becomes very important. Okay, so I'm just moving this through and moving it through like this also helps minimize the twisting of the silk because your silk will want to twist on you. That's just, that's the nature of the silk. That's what it wants to do. Um, different materials kind of want to do different things. Um, and you just need to coax it through straight so that it doesn't get all twisted, okay? And this part takes a little bit of finagling because you need to make sure, and again, I'm, I'm eyeballing to make sure that it's the right amount of room here. I don't like how not close this is. We wanna make sure that it's the right amount of room here, the might, right amount of room here, and the right amount of room here. Okay, but in order to do this, unfortunately, I'm going to have to give myself a little bit more, <laughs> a little bit more space for working. So hopefully we'll all be able to see. I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna pick it up. I think that'll be the easiest for all of us. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna snug this up just a little bit more because I know that I need just a little bit more space here. Okay, and sometimes it takes a little, a little coaxing, a little cajoling, but eventually it's going to do what I want it to do. Okay, so now what I need to do is again, I'm just going to tie an overhand knot. And again, um, even though this thread is really long, I'm keeping the needle on it because I need the needle on it to, of course, go through my next bead. Oops, well, that didn't, that didn't take the way I wanted it to. So I'm just going to put my beading all in here and sneak this over the top. It's more than one way to get this done, right? And tighten this up. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through this knot or this bead and I'm going to tie that same overhand knot. And I think that my knots are getting twisted because they should not be this big and bulky. I don't like that. I'm gonna see if I can, if I can make that a little bit prettier, right? We don't, we don't want a knot that's all, all janky. It's my favorite new word that I learned from my friend Dub Floros, janky. We're gonna tie this knot totally 100% again. And you can see that um, since I didn't tighten it up, sometimes you can go back and fix it. Not always. Um, oh, see, yep, see, it's twisted in there. That's why it got so big. Um, so I just need to make sure that it does not get twisted this time so that it doesn't get too big. So let's see if I can't make that happen. Wow. I'm doing this, bear with me for one moment. I don't know why it keeps getting twisted on me. Can anybody see what I'm doing wrong that it keeps getting twisted like that? It's clearly is something that I am doing that I'm not paying good attention to, but at least I know that my mistake is happening so that I can fix it. It should just go right through here. <laughs> why isn't this working? And sometimes that happens, right? When you're, when you're making jewelry, you're like, wait a second, I know that this should work. And for whatever reason, it's just not working. And it's super frustrating, but we just kind of play along with it and figure out how to fix it. And I think I fixed it that time. I have no idea what I did differently, but I did it right. <laughs> so see, I don't have that great big knot in there because I just did a nice overhand knot. Maria, you cannot use the knotter tool for the last knots because you're not actually doing them the same way as you are the, um, the knots as you're going along. So now I just need to, and this is always the one where I'm like the most nervous about because there's nothing I can do now if the, um, 
if the needle won't go through. So that's really why you want to double check and take the time to make sure that all of your beads are reamed out enough in the beginning, because if they're not, there's really nothing that you can do um, except cut it apart. And I have done that plenty of times. <laughs> so it's not the end of the world because in an hour long class, I was able to make a full bracelet. So it hasn't been, um, it, it's not, you know, something that it's like I'm doing a whole sculptural peyote piece, but you certainly, you know, you don't want to have to undo it if you don't have to, right? So, okay, so now I've gone through that first one, I've tied a knot, I've gone through the second one and I've tied a knot. And just like we did in the beginning, if you remember way back when that far, we are going to go through that third one, but we're, we already have a knot there, right? So this is always the one that's for me, the trickiest to get through. So I poked my needle through a little bit and I like using my pliers to pull a needle through. Just, it's always been a, um, a good trick of mine. All right, so now everything is tight. And once again, I am going to use my not quite perfect glue. Oops. And remember the tip that I gave in the beginning. I'm just holding it in my hand and allowing the warmth from my hand to let the glue flow through. And I'm totally glopping that up because my little, um, my little beginning part broke off. Um, I think I pulled it off actually, but my, um, my top goes back in no problem because I don't have to worry about the, um, there being glue all over the place. So then what I would do for my last step is let this dry, right? So just kind of let it dry, walk away, grab a cup of coffee, um, do, take the dog out, do whatever you need to do. And then the last step, and let me see if I can get this a little bit closer than I did the last one, is come in here and snip off the end. And so then you have a pretty professionally done um, knotted piece of jewelry. So let me reattach it. Um, and the black, I think actually looks really nice um, when you have it with the white pearls, but it's, it's a style thing. If I were, you know, making it professionally um, or restringing someone's pearls that they brought for me, I would probably do a, um, a white, a white strand. So um, Felicia, we are ready to come back up to the front. I, I said there was a lot of information, right? I had a lot of, um, a lot of different ways that you could do things, but the end result is a wonderful, um, a wonderful new heirloom that you've either made or an old heirloom that you've saved. And keep in mind also, I hadn't mentioned yet, but when you go to the jewelry store to have your pearls restrung, they charge an awful lot of money. Uh, so it is well worth the investment in the tool and in the time to learn how to do it yourself, because not only can you restring your own jewelry, but you can also restring jewelry for other people as well. So I am Meredith Roddy for Beetalon and Artistic Wire, and thank you very much to Michaels for allowing me to teach this class on repurposing old jewelry. Today we repurposed some old pearls, even though we used new pearls. Um, in the future, we will be doing um, more repurposing of old jewelry. So if it's something that you want to see, definitely make a quick comment in the comments and let the Michaels people know and they'll let me know that a repurposing of old jewelry part two is something that you would be interested in. Keep in mind that the uh, Beat Along classes from Michaels are every two, um, what day is today? Every Wednesday at two o'clock Eastern time. Um, and you can always sign up for those on the Michaels Community Classroom website. And of course you can watch in the, um, the replay as well. 
And we do also offer classes on Saturdays at 2, 2 p.m. Eastern time sometimes as well. So make sure that you are always looking back on that community classroom page because we have so many classes and so many exciting classes coming up over the spring and over the summer. So again, thank you all very, very much for joining me live. And if you are catching me on the replay, thanks for staying through to the very end. And if you, if you do make some um, some knotted jewelry, whether it be re-knotting pearls or, um, re or knotting other gemstones or other beads, please go ahead and tag us on your socials when you post them. You want to use the hashtag make it with beadalon, of course, and then also make it with Michaels. Um, you can find us on all the socials to follow and get inspiration as well. And um, for me and for Finn, who is over here taking a little nap, he's the resident Beetle on Golden Retriever in the satellite studio. Um, I will say have a wonderful week. And until next time, happy beating. <laughs>